to Henry, obviously, um, marriage. Uh, again, like, I'm not married, but I, I'm, you have, how do you make marriage work and be a public market CEO? Are there any tips that you have for me, genuinely, and for people to listen, that help make it work? By the way, I want to lead this, uh, I should have said this in the very beginning, which is everything that I'm saying to you, I, I have not figured out anything. I just know what I know, right? So nothing I'm about to say is like, these. you should follow these uh, as, as rules for yourself. But what I've found works out really well is that, um, you know, Hillary and I have been together on and off. Well, we, we dated, you know, before we got married, obviously. Uh, but we've been together for like 35, 36 years, something, something like that. We've been married for 25 years. We know each other really, really well. Uh, and so, um, and we complement each other really well. She's a yoga instructor, right? And I'm a CEO of a public traded company. And we have very vastly different worlds outside of each other. We basically allow each other to have that space. Uh, and that kind of do you like? Do you like that she's not in your world? I love it. You would be you would be surprised to know that I think Hillary has probably attended less than ten Procore events in twenty one years. She desperately tries to keep a firewall between our family and Procore, and that's her contribution to it. Is when I get home, we don't talk about Procore. We talk about the family. We talk about our relationship. We talk about our mutual. Is that interest. not hard? That I have this, but Procore is you. 20 yeah. VC and venture is me. I, I can't separate it. She forces me to. I've got a very, very strong willed wife. I don't have a lot of choice, but it works, you know, it, it works. And, you know, and she, I would not be able to survive if I didn't have her. I wouldn't be a good CEO at Procore if I wasn't able to have, um, the, you know, her supporting me through this process, which essentially means giving me time um, and, it's just in giving me my space that I need to, to, to kind of regroup and re and get kind of performant again. So by the way, you, you, let me tell you this, cause it's like business. When I set out on starting Procore, I kind of had this vision of like someday we're going to be done and everything's going to be a state of Nirvana, right? You, founders like to tell themselves that when you, when you get married on your, you know, your early days, you're, you're like, Hey, you know, someday this is going to be perfect. Right. Well, neither one of those stories is ever true, right? It's it's always a struggle and it's always a slog, but it's hopefully always a um, a net positive that you actually benefit from. And fortunately for me, with my my business and my 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 wife, uh, I've been extremely successful. I had a guest on the show the other day, and they said, "Harry, Harry, you don't understand." The thing that people get wrong about marriage is they conflate marriage and happiness. It's not about happiness. It's about persistence, boy. <laughs> yeah. And you know, you asked me before, does it get any easier with Procore? It's the same things with marriage, right? It doesn't get any di easier. Things become different, you know, and, uh, but things never, you know, you still deal with challenges. Everybody does. And that's just... That's life. You know, that's one of the things I think a lot about these days is that I think there's an ex like perception that life should be stable and safe and predictable. People want that, right? But life is anything but that. Life is actually the complete opposite of that. And the more resilient you are and the more agile you are at dealing with adversity, the, the kind of ultimately the happier you are. So um, I think we have to dispel with the myth that, we, you know, that we are all deserving of stability and, and safety and happiness in our lives because it, that's just not a natural state. I'm throwing a grenade in here. Like it's dark outside. It's cold. It's raining. I'm about to go and do a half marathon and cycle 40 miles. And it's like 7 PM. I like that because I, I want to suffer because yeah. I then just tell myself that I can get through that and the rest of the week will be cool. Yeah. Um, I find most people, honestly, who are young, are pretty delicate. They're little petals. Do you agree? And do you not think that we have this kind of quite soft generation who actually need to kind of harden up a little bit more? I have to really be careful of how I answer this question because I have a lot of younger folks that work at Procore. You don't uh, have to. This is not no, a no, no, no. But what I would like to say about that is that it's a little bit more complicated. I, I, I find myself, now that I'm 56 years old, I always try to question myself. Am I like the, the, am I like the old man who's like, get off my lawn kind of guy now, you know, or, and therefore judging the younger generation for being exactly who I was? I do think from adversity comes, well, you learn who you are and actually you can 
to derive strength. I think that we've been coming off of a very, very um, productive global economy for a very long period of time. Uh, there's been very few challenges that people have had to address uh, in their early career. Uh, and so I think that does lead to some sense of, um, uh, or lack of, of kind of uh, resolve and, and I don't know. It's just, I, I feel like there's a little bit of that, but I also believe that the world works in cycles and that we're gonna, you know, we're, we're in somewhat of a, a difficult economic time globally right now. Uh, if that gets worse, it's gonna actually strengthen people. You know, they always talk about the greatest generation being the World War II, the folks mm. that, that fought World War II. I honestly think that the reason that it was the greatest generation is they de dealt with so much adversity and so much was on the line that they couldn't, they didn't have time to complain about there not being enough oat milk in the refrigerator in one of your buildings at work, you know? Uh, it's just a different time. I wouldn't fucking mind that because it meant they were in the office. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm old school too, Harry. Like I used to go to work and my only thing at work was I needed to make my boss happy and I wanted to earn a paycheck. Yeah. I don't know if that's necessarily the number one and number two things that most people look at when they look for a job these days.